A century ago, Texas school children were taught that 189 white American men died within the walls of the Alamo on March 6, 1836. But today, thanks to continuing and diligent research, we know the richer, broader, more complete story of these heroes who will be forever enshrined in the hearts of Texans. The meticulous records of the Mexican army who collected and disposed of the defenders' remains at three large funeral pyres suggest that there were as many as 240 defenders inside the former mission compound. We also know that as many as 75 or 80 defenders exited the compound via the south or east walls when they were horribly overrun in the pre-dawn hours of that Sunday. They were attempting to reach the Gonzales Road that would take them back toward the American colonies and potentially allow them to regroup, reinforce, and continue the fight against the Mexican Centralists. The leadership of that army also understood the importance of the Gonzales Road and were waiting there as the sun crested the horizon at their backs. Lancers from the Dolores Battalion finished off the fleeing Texans, and one of the piles of burned bodies was at that location. We can also be confident that six or seven of the defenders were cornered inside the Alamo compound and surrendered only to be brutally executed by the swords of some Mexican soldiers eager to curry favor with their commander. General Antonio Lopez de Santana had vowed to allow no survivors among the Texian force, which he viewed as pirates. Early in the 13-day siege, an offer had been made for Texians to abandon the Alamo. Those who stayed were destined for death and a place in history. But who exactly were they? Where were they from and why were they there? Some were defending their homes, while others were newly arrived adventurers seeking the promise of free land and opportunity. Of the 90-some Texas residents, 40 came from the town of Gonzales. Tejanos defended the old mission walls where some of them had previously lived. There were Americans from almost every state in the Union, more than two dozen men from Britain and Ireland, and a handful from Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands gave their lives for the concept of Texas. Some were holdovers from the siege of Behar the previous year, and others arrived within the walls only hours before their deaths. Not everyone in the Alamo compound was even free. A score of the defenders brought enslaved servants, some of whom did not survive. One free black man was inside, and it is likely an escaped enslaved woman perished alongside her white lover. As the thunderous roar of attack broke the pre-dawn stillness, as Mexican soldados breached the walls from most every direction, non-combatants, women, and children of defenders huddled in fear. They and some of the enslaved were the only people inside who lived to tell their tales. The former mission compound was of little tactical benefit in the grand scheme, but it almost immediately became a place of pilgrimage for the curious and those wishing to honor the Texas martyrs. The Alamo defenders defined a spirit, and along with those massacred at Goliad, inspired a battle cry and fueled a resolve that ultimately won the Texas Revolution. It is the most famous building in the state and has been celebrated in popular culture as much as any battle in American history. Its story of great sacrifice against all odds has become a defining Texas legend. Mm -hmm.